Good afternoon. My name is Frank Schwartz. I'm the president of the Shoah Boston Institute, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. We're gathered today to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the founding of Shoah Boston, a school that has thrived even as so many others have failed. Uh, let me introduce each of our distinguished speakers in turn. To begin, our home campus, Shoah Women's University, was established by the poet and educator Tomi Adichie and his wife Midori. It's a great honor to introduce to you Tomi Noriko-san, who will speak about her father's vision and the founding of Shoah Boston. faculty and staff of Shoa Boston and our students. Good afternoon and welcome to our international campus, Boston. I'm extremely pleased, delighted to see you all here today, this afternoon, on this special occasion. To begin, as you have heard a little bit already from uh, Bob Sensei, um, the, soon after the First World War, my grandfather, the first chancellor of Shoah uh, Women's University felt the necessity of educating young Japanese women to a higher level. During his lifetime, he observed that men in Japan tended towards showing their power fighting, and women were expected to help men keeping the household and family in order. The first chancellor was a poet, as you have heard before. He decided to stop writing poems on paper, and he wanted to write important ideas of life in the hearts of young women. He founded Showa Academy 98 years ago, based on the great pedagogical ideas of the famous Russian writer and educator, Leo Tolstoy, who taught students the importance of cherishing love, understanding, and harmony. In the very beginning, Shoah students received their student visas at Saint, to study at St. Michael's College, staying in the dorms of St. Michael's in Vermont, and also staying here on the Mount Hill. Later on, my father noticed the strong leadership of Dr. Provost and asked him in 1992 to take the position of the president of Shaw Austin. Uh, we want to thank Dr. Provost for his special effort to guide Shaw Boston out of the chaotic operational situation it was in at the time he was appointed as president. I would like to express my deepest appreciation to all of you who never gave up and helped in every way to assist our students. I also would like to express my gratitude to the Bostonian families and friends who joined our institution as volunteer families and shared their lives with our students. Thank you, Boston. Thank you, America. Thank you to you all, and congratulations. has preempted me in my introduction of our next speaker, Dr. Ron Provost. <laughs> but briefly, uh, Dr. Provost worked at St. Michael's College in Vermont, where he rose from professor to vice president. And as Tommy san mentioned, in 1988, it was Dr. Provost who decided that St. Michael's would partner with the new Shoah Boston Institute to help students get visas to enter the United States. He then came on board to serve as president of Shoah Boston from 1992 to 2014, which is to say that he deserves much of the credit for the survival and flourishing of Shoah Boston since its birth 30 years ago. In recognition of Dr. Provost's many achievements here, the Japanese government presented him with the Order of the Rising Sun in the year 2014, he will speak today about the early years of Shoah Boston. Right. 
Thank you. Don't be sad to say my face is still red. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Uh, I received a phone call a while ago and said, Ron, would you be willing to come down and talk about the first 25 years of Shoah? I said, absolutely. But can you do it in five minutes? <laughs> I'll try. Also, in the early days, we were called Shoah Women's Institute. Now, I got a funny little story to tell you. We used to, well, we still do, but we had buses that were taking our students all over the place. Shoah Women's Institute. Well, the windows happened to be black and dim. I mean, dark, you know, just dark. And, and people didn't know what SWI was, and they said, is, is that a jail facility? <laughs> and the problem was some of the students said yes. <laughs> because the curfew, you're not going to believe this, the curfew was what time? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. In the afternoon. Hard to believe, but probably in the 30 years that we've been here, we have impacted approximately 20,000 students. Maybe. So, uh, as I said, I retired four years ago, and that's kind of where we are, but it, it keeps on growing, and it keeps on getting better. I'm looking forward to the next 30 years. If, you, if I can find out, I'm ready to speak. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you so much. Our next speaker on Domatico is Chancellor of Shoah Women's University. She pursued a path-breaking career that began as the first woman to be employed in the Japanese Prime Minister's office as a career bureaucrat. Ando Sensei served the Japanese government in various capacities for 34 years, including as Consul General in Brisbane, Australia, again the first woman to hold such a post and as Director General of the Bureau for Gender Equality. And if that were not enough, <clears throat> she's also the author of more than 40 books, including Dignity of a Woman, which was Japan's number one bestseller in the year 2007. Ando Sensei will speak today about the present and future of Shoah Boston. President Ingat of Temple University, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, students, welcome to this ceremony. On behalf of Shoah Women's University, I would like to extend a few words at this special uh, occasion of Shoah Boston Institute's 30th anniversary celebration ceremony today. This campus was established in 1988 under the very powerful leadership of uh, Kuzu Shitomi, father of Noriko san, uh, Noriko Shitomi san. And uh, it is a fun, fun, founding idea can be seen in Motsu Hiru Declaration, um, which states the uh, war to join Japan and the world. At the time, no other Japanese university had established a full-scale institution of higher education. I want to thank all of you who have supported uh, this Boston you know, Shoah campus for the last 30 years. Former Chancellor, Honorable Chancellor uh, Noriko Shitomi Sanse, uh, former President uh, Ronald Provost, teachers, staff, and the member of the Boston community, uh, Council General, looking ahead to the next 10, 20 years, 
we will continue our effort and sophisticate, sophisticate our program. Together with you all, let's join Japan to United States and the world. Thank you very much. joined Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the year 1986. After serving in several of the ministry's bureaus, he came to the United States as a political officer in Japan's embassy. Ichi san went on to serve in Japan's embassy in Myanmar and as director of a variety of divisions in the ministry's European Affairs Bureau, Foreign Policy Bureau, and International Legal Affairs Bureau before becoming the Minister in Japan's Embassy to Russia and Deputy Director General of the Economic Affairs Bureau. He joined us here in Boston as Consul General in August 2016, and we've been honored to work with him on a variety of occasions. Consul General Michi. I'd like to thank Shou Boston for its foresight and wisdom and being such a fine example of international education. Now more than ever, I believe investment in education and innovation for the next generation is critically important. This is why I admire the wisdom of people uh, behind the show. So thank you very much, uh, Tommy san and uh, 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 President Robos and also uh, Jim and Carmen uh, and uh, all these people who actually made this happen and supported uh, this effort. The world 30 years ago might have looked more stable, but now it's more complex than we imagined then. This is why we need to look to the future of education, science and technology and getting people connected. Thirty years ago, Boston was already a center of education, but it has grown even further since then and now is functioning as a center of leading ecosystem is in the United States, as uh, you know. In partnership, we need to encourage young students to travel, study, live, and have experiences abroad. Uh, certificate of commendation uh, presented to Shaw Boston Institute for Language and Culture Service in contributing to deepening of a mutual understanding and friendship between United and the States. Consul uh, General Japan Union uh, to present this uh, on uh, September 14th, 2018. There are unique festivals in every part of Japan. Among them, famous are Nekita in Aomori, Gion in Kyoto, and Kanda in Tokyo Kanda Festival. The last song is a message from Kanda Festival. Showa Matsuri.
for 100 years. The master of the Shamsen player, Ms. Masayo Yoshizumi. Masayo. I'd like to introduce to you State Representative Kay Coral, who represents the Bristol District here in the state. She's currently running for state treasurer, and that makes her the first Asian American woman to seek a constitutional office here in Massachusetts. So another woman with a path-breaking career. And I understand that she brought us something from the State Assembly. It's an honor to be with you here today. Seven years ago when I became the first Japanese woman to serve in the legislature, I had no idea how many fun and, and exciting experiences I would have. One of those has been being involved with Showa and the Japanese American community. And so it is, with, it is a great honor to be here with you today to celebrate 30 years. So on behalf of my colleagues in the legislature, I want to present to show up Boston, a citation from the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to show up Boston in recognition of the celebration of your 30th anniversary, wishing you many, many years of success. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses hope for your future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors given this 14th day of September 2018 uh, at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, offered by the Speaker of the House, Robert DeLeo, and myself, Keiko Matsudo Oro. I'd like to take an opportunity to acknowledge the service of some of our employees here at Shoah Boston Institute. Um, one testament to the strength of this institution is the fact that people tend to stay here. And we have some employees who have been here from the very start, for 30 years. And I would like to honor them by acknowledging all of these many years of service for which we are extremely grateful. I will call them up in alphabetical order. And we'll begin with Mr. Louis Aponte. <laughs> Linda Engelman. Peter Hartshorn. <laughs> Unfortunately, another 30-year veteran is not here to receive uh, our acknowledgement today. John Bowling, who was director of facilities for 30 years, died recently. As it happens, the very last day that he served here marked uh, the 30th anniversary of his arrival here. He started as a very young man, as a laborer, before Shoah Boston even opened, I think, and rose through the ranks to become the director of facilities, one of the most responsible positions on campus. Uh, his death came as a great loss for all of us, but here uh, in his place is his wife, Patty. For 
those of you who've been here before, uh, you might notice that in front of the main facility, on that spot of the campus where the view of the Boston skyline is best, you will now find a bench uh, with a plaque commemorating John's service here. Uh, you might stop on your way out to take a look. Now, uh, I'm very pleased to learn that the Alumni Association of Shoah Women's University and the Alumni Association of Shoah Junior and Senior High School very generously collected donations on our behalf, and here to present them is higo -san. おめでとうございます。心より喜びどうぞ。spoke at the start of this ceremony about Japanese students going overseas, but internationalization or kokusaika was driven by the arrival of foreign, especially American institutions in Japan, as well as by Japanese universities and ministries. In the year 1982, Temple University became the first American institution to establish a branch school in Japan. It offered an American-style curriculum taught in English at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. By 1989, as many as 150 U.S. universities and university consortiums had explored the idea of opening a branch campus in Japan. There were 36 new foreign branch schools or universities operating in Japan in 1990, but most of those schools Failed. International higher education services, like branch campuses, were simply not recognized as an integral part of Japan's system of higher education, and they were left isolated from that system. By the year 2004, only four branch campuses of American institutions remained. The very next year, in 2005, however, the Ministry of Education designated Temple of University's Tokyo campus as the first foreign university Japan campus, that is, Gaikoku Daigaku Nihonko. So its credits and degrees were finally recognized as equivalent to those of Japanese universities. Thus, it's a special pleasure to welcome Dr. Richard Engler, president of Temple University. Under his leadership, Temple has broken records for freshman applications, begun major campus renovations, and gained unprecedented national recognition. More to the point, with regard to today's ceremony, as has previously been mentioned, President Engler has agreed to move Temple University's Japan campus to the Tokyo campus of Showa Women's University, bringing together these two pioneering institutions. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a privilege, a real privilege, to be here with such distinguished speakers, with such honored guests, and especially with the faculty and students, because in higher education, without faculty and students, we're nothing. Uh, you are the ones who carry out the mission of our great uh, universities. Uh, I'm honored to be here uh, at this wonderful show of Boston, and I want to say congratulations to everybody, everybody present, for 30, 30 magnificent years. On behalf of everyone at Temple University, I bring greetings from Philadelphia, and I want to say, without a doubt, that I bring very, very warm regards from our faculty, from our students, from our board of trustees, from everyone, everyone at Temple University. 
So I'm indebted to show Women's University for giving us the opportunity to join in partnership with you. And it means that Temple University students will have truly a world-class international education because of our partnership. It will mean opportunities for our students to experience the exciting culture of Japan uh, in a top quality educational environment. Most of all, it means that Temple and Shoah will each benefit from each other's strengths. And together, uh, we will go forward in friendship and colleagueship and truly break new ground uh, for each of our countries. So I can't wait for the day that uh, we actually arrive on campus. It's going to be exciting. Uh, it will be a time at which we begin the next phase of a great partnership, a partnership that will last for many, many years. Show of Boston. Congratulations on 30 years. May your next 30 years be as blessed as these are. Thank you very much. It is a delight and an honor to be here. Tonight. That concludes our formal ceremony. Uh, for our students, you'll find refreshments in the sunroom. For those guests, who are legal, who have other refreshments in the lobby. Uh, I invite you all to stay and chat, but thank you again for joining us. It's a great honor to be first of all of you.